Hey guys, it's Landon Blake from Redefined Horizons, and this is the second video in a set of videos that I'm doing to show you how to create a modern meets and bounds land description. Surveyors also call those legal descriptions. I call them land descriptions. So in the last video, I took you into my boundary design drawing and I showed you how to create a site in Civil 3D, and then we created these parcel objects in Civil 3D. And so what I want to do now, we want to get these parcels on the right layer. Then I'm going to go in and show you how to tweak, tweak some of the drawing settings so that the information we get when we run the closure report is closer to what we want in Microsoft Word when we actually write the legal description. So let's go in and just do a good layer housekeeping here, drawing housekeeping. And I like to put my Civil 3D objects on a layer that starts with the prefix C3D. So then I'm going to just say C3D parcels design that's the naming convention I use and usually non plottable objects I give a color down here uh, that's how I work things on my CTB file so now we can grab the parcels remember you got to use the label to do that and we're gonna go ahead and put them on the C3D parcel design layer okay do that we'll do the same thing with the parcel segments all right okay so let's go in and tweak our drawing settings so that those closure reports look the way we want so we're gonna have to switch from the prospector tab to the settings tab we're gonna edit the drawing settings right click on the on the drawing name and say edit drawing settings and civil 3d has this little tab over here called ambient settings so that's what we want to go in and tweak and the way I remember this is ambient like think of candlelight you're writing land descriptions by candlelight <laughs> I don't know why they call them ambient settings but that's what they pick all right so there's like four of these that we got to mess with so the first one is coordinate they've got the precision to four and that's a little overkill for me let's knock her down to two um, then we want angle if you got curves you're gonna have angles and we do not want decimal we want degrees minutes seconds I think four is the right precision. It might be two, we'll find out. Um, and it says, do you want to drop the decimal for whole numbers? No. Do you want to drop leading zeros for degrees? No, I don't need to do that. Okay, then the other one we need to tweak is direction. This is for your bearings. Again, we want degree there, but we want degrees, minutes, seconds here. You don't want decimal degrees, you want degrees, minutes, seconds, that's already set. The precision, they've got me to like the hundredth of a second. Yeah, we don't measure that good. So I'm going to knock it down. Near second is fine. Thank you. Now you can say short name or long name. I like the long name spaced. I like, I don't need uppercase. Title caps is fine. And I think that's everything we need. Uh, there, is there distance? Yep. We got to tone the distance down too. They got it to three, three digits behind the decimal. That two's fine. All right, so we're going to go in and pull one of those closure reports now, and you're going to see if that closure report is a little closer to what we want in Microsoft Word. So we're going to go into Parcel Properties and the right-click menu, pop-up menu, map check, set our point and beginning again. We're going to run that clockwise, and now you can see my coordinates are only to the nearest hundredth, my bearings are to the nearest second, my distances are to the nearest hundredth which is what I want and then if we go down to where we have a curve you can see I've got uh, my curve angles are to the near second that's fine it looks like it kept the leading zero I'm not going to stress about that too much so all we want to do now is select that text and copy it and I am going to pull up Microsoft Word Maybe. All right, guys. So I've got Microsoft Word pulling up here. And what we're going to do is we're going to just paste in that text that we got from the Parcel Properties dialog. All right. So we got the text in there now. I actually have a template I use for closure reports, but I'm just going to show you guys how to do some basic cleanup on this closure report. 
Um, and then we'll use this, we'll copy this and it'll be the skeleton of our land description. But to start, I just like to put the name of the parcel. This is parcel one. I'm going to say closure report, not for recording. I always put that at the top and then they end up getting recorded anyways by accident. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and put those in bold. And I'm going to pick a nice title font here. All right. Then I'm going to select the rest of this. And I'm going to use that same font. Just not as bold. All right. So now we've got the closure report. We got the font. We put a little title in there. And then this is what I like to do. So uh, the default report comes out of AutoCAD with a bunch of extra spaces. So I like to say some of this you can edit replace. So we got extra spaces here. So I'm going to say re replace. And I'm going to say space, space, colon, space, which is colon. So you can see that fixes that problem. Okay, and then here I'm going to delete that extra line. Same thing, extra line there. So this is just a little bit of cleanup. And you can set, I think you can set a word maker up to do this, but I haven't taken the time to do that because I'm a little bit lazy. Obviously not lazy enough or I would have done the macro. So we're just getting rid of some of these extra lines. So you can see there's a little more info for the curves. Oop, did one too many there. Okay, and then the last thing I like to do is I like to put these segment labels in bold just so you, that kind of makes it easier to find what you're looking for in here. And then I'm going to select all of that and get rid of the stinking auto spacing. Drives me crazy. So I'll do zero. Ah, oh, so much better. All right. Okay, then we're going to save this. And uh, we'll save it as a closure report doc. So let's see. I got to browse for this, I think. So obviously your spot will be different. Uh, but I've got a standard place I like to stick these. So I'm going to go find my job folder. Alright, so I'm in my job folder now, and I'm actually going to put this in mapping, and I need a new folder. I'm going to call this LLA Land Descriptions. And the way I like to set my folders up is inside of that. Uh, I'm actually going to do another folder. I'm going to do a folder for each parcel. So I'll have a parcel one folder and a parcel two folder. Okay, so I've got my parcel one folder. I'm going to open that up and then I'm going to name this. I like to do the job number first, then the date. And then we're going to say parcel one. Closure report, and we'll save that, and then we'll 
actually save a copy of this very same document. So let's do that right now. And we're going to use that as the skeleton of our land description. And I'm going to show you how to take that skeleton and create a land description from it. And another video, we're going to call this land description. All right, so I'll do another video and show you how I take this closure report and turn it into a meets and bounds land description. Thanks for watching, guys, and I hope I kept you, catch you in the uh, next video in the in the set.